I tell you, I simply delight with excitement in the rendition of that song. I can't hear it enough. For I can do all things through Yahshua HaMashiach, the power of Yah. It grants unto Yisrael Yah the strength, the fullness of his might. We do want to greet you all on this Shabbaton, this time of rest. Yah grants unto his Beyats, his house, and his Beyat consists of those that are of his election, that he has chosen. He has elected them by the power of his sovereign election. He needs no input from anyone. No one can direct him in the path of his election. It is by his own foreknowledge. Before we were ever birth born, he knew who was the Zira of Yisra'ya. And for that, I do barach him. And that is separate that I bow in his presence. I lift up his name. I esteem him mightily for all that he has granted unto me. I have breath. I am not ashamed of the gospel or the message of Almighty Yah. The knowledge of Yahshua HaMashiach, for it is the power of Almighty Yah to bring deliverance unto his house. And there's one thing that I'm certain of when there is an appreciation of anything, that we will show an excitement about that. We're a nation of people that we really don't show an excitement for Almighty Yah. Of everything else, we show an excitement for that. I greet you all, my friends, you that have joined us by the live broadcast the live stream on this Shabbaton. You that are in the far away places in the nations that are not too far but in the distance our precious Janice and those that are gathered there in Dominica. We greet you all and our precious hope there in Granada, Sister Joyce, and those that have gathered in our home in the Sukhats during this festivity and our precious friend Dawi Nesha and his entire family that have joined us uh, there in Scotland as they have gathered with us and joined us in this most beautiful celebratory time. And those that are near here in the United States, there are those that I do want to greet. Uh, our precious Ochots Mariana there in Indiana, our friend Arach Dawi there in Indiana. Also our precious Yako, they are in Jacksonville, Florida, and our precious friend over the many years, uh, our precious Yaakob, they are in Texas, and our precious friend as well, uh, our friend uh, Hagel Benamin, they are in Arkansas, and all of you that have joined us, wherever you are, whomever will listen to the, to the broadcast, there are those not a tremendous list, but there are those that I do want to acknowledge, our friend and our precious up, that Yah has granted in his bosom to put us on a broadcast there in Memphis, Tennessee, our friend Thomas, Ach, Thomas Lowe, he's a Zachain among us, the young men. We do appreciate your kindness, your tenderness, Yabrach, your family, and our precious Ach, Lester Gaetan there, in the city of Chicago, Illinois, may he strengthen you. Our friends there in uh, St. Louis, Missouri, uh, uh, our precious Ach Cliff and his uh, Chotz, uh, his Isha, uh, Chot Rosa, Wadi there in St. Louis, Missouri. And we will not negate to mention your name, my precious friend, uh, our Zachin McDonald there in Jefferson, Kansas. And all of our friends and all of those that have been so supportive of the works of Yah, our Zachin uh, Yoshai that had to leave today, but we greet you and those that are with you on this tremendous Shabbaton. And have I forgotten you? It is not that I have forgotten you. We appreciate all of your kindness, your work, our precious Ochot Kenya. There in Phoenix, Arizona, her great kindness, her gifts, her tender mercies toward the works here that Yah has granted in her bosom to assist and to help 
We do greet you all, Yisra'ya, wherever you are, in the precious name of Yahshua Hamashiach. We come to this time as our Zachin Yarmia and said the last great day this Yam Khadul Akharith Kha, the last great day. It is the time whereby Yah has granted unto Yisraya as we come to this time of this climactic event. There is no order in the Khatve scripture that instructs us in the protocol of this last great day, this Yom Gadol Acharitha. But we do understand through the process of time with Yisraya, it is a time on the eighth day, it is a time of renewing or new beginning. It is the number seven, which is perfection, and the number one added that produces uh, the new beginning, the bo chash, to be renewed, to be restored, to be rebuilt, uh, that we as a nation of people may operate in the ruach of Omariyam. This was a time of the season uh, where all things were ingathered into the storehouses. The lies of the grapes, the scuffadines, uh, the scuffanogs, uh, to make the ya yen, the wine, the wine that refreshes uh, the mind, the ruach of Yisraya. And it was the time when all of that was gathered in. Uh, and then the renewing of Yah's refreshing uh, after a tremendous celebratory time uh, of Sukkot. Uh, that the mind was prepared uh, for the next year of Yah to be gone. Uh, and this was the time and the season afterwards uh, that we began to plant the barley, that in the beginning or the beginning of Yah's year, it would flourish, and there would be barley to gather, and barley for the time of uh, Shu'utvats. And so he brings us to this most beautiful occasion. It is quite sad that we don't see the beauty of this, the new beginning or the refreshing or the re renewing of our minds. As we have gathered in Yerushalayim, we have met those from a distance, and we see the beauty of their celebratory stance for the beauty of Omar Iyam. And it begins to create in us this benevolence unto Yah, And it makes us love him the more. As they gather in the streets of Yerushalayim, waiting on the sound of the shofar. It was not a time to sleep and to be slothful, but it was a time of excitement that they would gather in the streets, in the gates of the tabernacle, and the testimonies would blare out among the thong of the crowd, and one ear would be given over unto that, and they were simply excited to hear what Yah had done. So it prepared their mind for the year that was ahead of them. This is uh, the new beginning here, Yisraya. And this day is the new beginning. He plants, he waters, and he calls the increase. We do pray that the Torah of Yah has been deeply rooted in the bosom of Yisraya. We began to uh, cast out everything out of us that is offensive uh, unto the Most High. And as we take our journey in the will of Yah, that we will go with excitement, uh, and it will keep us refreshed uh, unto the gathering of His people, uh, again in Yerushalayim at Pesach. And that is the purpose of it, Yisra'ya. Everything that Yah does, it has a profound meaning. And this last great day, this Yom Gadol Acharith Cha, it has a great significance to its meaning. And what I want to do tonight in our closing here, I want to try to define it with meaning. According to the Torah, there are certain Chattuv or the Chatvei scriptures I will use uh, to
to bring us somewhat of clarity uh, and how the rejoicing of our bosom uh, we delight in all that Yah has done. We've gathered in all uh, that He has granted unto us. And once we see the harvest uh, of what we have gathered in, uh, when they would turn toward Yerushalayim, there was great excitement. The barns were filled. The cattle were fat. The sheep and the goats, they had multiplied. And there were much of the riches unto Yisrael. There was much in the field left for the gleaners that they may come and glean. And that their covets would be full, Yisrael. Whether you are a bystander, a stranger unto Yisrael, there has been much for you to glean from. There has been much for you to glean to take the ears of the corn and eat that, that your nephesh may be fat for the time that is ahead, Yisrael. And so what Yah does in this most prominent time, He gives us patterns or tasnuth, the begetting, the refining of a matter that shows us how Yah intends for us to walk because there is purpose behind he, how He wants us to walk and there is a great delight in His bosom when He sees that we fulfill His commandment with great delight. That we shall we keep, we guard the mu'adim of Yah. They are preserved in our bosom. They are zikron, a memoria. Our minds are always reminded of the season of Yah. And so we are constantly looking forward to the season and the seasons of Almighty Yah. Do not the world do that? They celebrate all kinds of activities. They will begin one of the most despicable diabolical days at the end of this month. They will sell their children to the demonic powers and dragons of hell. And then the next month they will proceed with their hog day. With their chitlins and guts and every kind of most damnable, despicable, uh, unclean thing that Yah commands us uh, not even to touch the carcass of the swine uh, and those unclean things. Uh, but they look forward to it, don't they? And yet those that are in a distant place, uh, they save their vacation time. Uh, they put back the nickels and dimes that they can venture Thanksgiving uh, it's one of the most traveled days uh, in America. And the most damnable, venerable day they call Mother Day. It is the truth. And then that proceeds after that they will have their ex mass uh, One of the most damnable lies that could ever be perpetrated. Uh, and they celebrate a damn lie. You understand? Jeremiah says they go and they cut the trees out of the woods. Uh, they decorate them with the tinsels and silver and gold. Uh, it is one of the most damnable pagan, disgusting things uh, that one could lay their hands uh, upon. And then they began to celebrate their most venerable day, the beginning of their year. But there's one thing about yours, better sheet. It always began with the new birth. And that is what Sukkoth should do to us. To rebirth the Torah in us. That our delight becomes uh, much more of an integrated power in our ruach, in our nefesh. There is not a task or a chore to barach, to bow, to pour out the blessings. We do barachim. You understand that the word barach means to curse, to lay an anathema upon Yah. And it also means to bow and to honor him. That's what it means as well, barach. It carries both connotations, Yisraya. And yet we say, we barach. Yeah, we are saying that we literally curse him. Because with the berachaya, the blessings of his riches, his shalom, his happiness fill our love. As the old ones would say, we can't hold back. The fire burns deep in our bosom. Something is twisted in us. 
Something is drastically wrong in our conscience, Yisra'ah. And that is the truth. So I'm glad that he has brought me to this yom day, Chadol, which is the greatness of Yah. Acharith, the last day of the last time. And Ha, the great last day. He has brought us unto that. I want to give us some clarity here concerning this, beginning in the book of Weyira, the book of Leviticus. I am filled with the edge of the happiness of Yah in my bosom. Now you can be discontented and upset all you want to. I am not discontented. I am not unhappy. And I am as broke as anyone in here. As the old ones would say, don't have a pot to urinate in, nor a window to throw it out. Hallelujah. I want to give us some insight here tonight as we come to the close of this most beautiful time. Always hate to see the feast days uh, dissolve. But I know that there are things that we as a people, as we began to prepare for the next one, beginning after this Shabbat. And that's what we do. And that's what I'm always in the mode for as I look for the next feast day. As I see, as I was saying to my Ach Simeon, I say it's time to till the ground there. It's time to till that. What are you going to put there? Well, we will plant sweet peas for the spring of the year and the luscious sweetness of the peas when they began to produce we will go and harvest them and i love them in the raw state you don't have to cook them for me because the sweetness they're so succulent Yisra'ya. he intended for us as a nation to eat from the ground he never intended for a meal to travel three thousand miles for you to enjoy it what hands has it gone through the uncleanliness, the prayer, and most of the foods today, you will see the Muslim symbols on that. We're not aware of that because we don't see things with the ruach of Yahis Ayan. We see it with our bellies, Yisrayah. We'll be surprised who is blessing the food today and offering it up to the gods, to the damn gods of the world. And we as a nation of people, we have not drawn as we see the calamity and the terror that is coming. Yah commands us, fail ye not to fellowship one with another. To be in the, the communal type of setting, uh, to enjoy each other, to live with each other. We love the world uh, more than we love Yah and his people. As much as we have opportunity, let us do tough unto all men. We don't intrigue them wrong, but Yah said, especially they that are of the house, Bayat Yisra'ah, we should have a great love for Yisra'ah. That should be a distinguished love because there is no way that the world will know that we are disciplined after the manner of Yahshua unless we have a great love toward each other. And we literally despise uh, what Yah has elected. You can only love me like you love yourself. If you don't give a damn about you, uh, you don't give a damn about me. He commands us to love our neighbor. Do you look at yourself and say, I love you, man? I do. I look at me and say, man, I love you. I love you, man. Come on. You're a mess, but I love you. So that I must love my ach and my chot with the same fervent of love. He did not say love. Mama, daddy, brother, sister. He said, I want you to love. I show you two. And the greatest commandment of all uh, is to love you with everything. And I show you one that is lack unto it. That you love your, re uh, your neighbor as you love your self and if you don't give a damn about you you will not give a damn about me i embrace me i love me i look at me and say i love you man 
your vile stinking thing, but I love you. That is the pure hava of Almighty Yah, not this putrefied mess that we have created. You'd rather be with the wicked than the people of Yah. What? A damnable shame. But that's all right. I'm, I'm what to teach, all right. Hallelujah. Whether you like me or not, it makes no difference. Turn your attention here to, to the book of Weihira. This is the new beginning or the Chadash. Chadash. The new beginning, the restoration, the restoring. That is what uh, this last great day represents. It is the day of new beginning. One represents the beginning, and seven represents in the numerics of Yah's his numerology, the perfection of that begetting. And we come to that. And the seven days which we have gathered, it has granted unto us to perfect that which remain. To perfect it. To make it uh, tomim. To make it whole and complete. To make our minds complete with the nourishment uh, of Yah's Torah. That we may present unto him the offering that is accepted, Yisra'ah. And then once we realize that we have reached that plateau, uh, that it is a time on this day uh, that Yah say you rest from all of the things you have begun on this week uh, and ponder all of that. Uh, for tomorrow is the new beginning. This day uh, is the new beginning that there is a zeal, a zest, a desire that is much more pronounced than what you had before you came. Than what you had before the feast began, Yisrael. We're sad looking people. And I say that to the shame of Yisrael. I say that to our shame. When they gather in that stadium down there in Miami, they're going to make some noise. When they gather here on their most vilest of whore days, Yom Rishon, the first day, here in Charlotte, they're going to act like fools for their gods. And they serve some of the most damned of a dirty, unclean gods. Panthers, Jack War, lions, a dirty cowboy that never took a bath when he was out there. Talk to me. They serve some dirty damn dogs of gods. Sure they do. Your yeah, gods are dogs, all gods are dogs. Every damn god is a dog. Damn them all. I don't take it back. Damn every god. Damn them all. Damn their Beels, their Lords, and their Jesus, their Jesus, their Christo, their Christ. Damn them all. Hallelujah. Now you all afraid. You better run. You better turn your, 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 your stream off because lightning may come. Let it come. I have no respect for that. We ought not to regard it. We let them trample upon the name of Yah. When it comes to that, I, I don't speak in some kind of a soft mannerism. Hallelujah. You can leave that to me. I'll say it all right. Don't worry about saying it. You're afraid you may die. Something may strike you. You get a pain and you think it's the God. I know who the damn God of this earth is. Shaul said, for the power of this imat be hidden from you. It is because the God of this world has blinded your eyes, lest the power of this magnificent emet shine through that you might be your shach. So if that's a God, Hashatan, damn every God. Damn them all. Damn every God. I say it emphatically, unrepentant, and I have no fear of the consequences that may come. Hallelujah. What have we got here in the book of We hear uh, Leviticus chapter 23. And it is vitally important that we revisit again, not tonight, but uh, the book of B. Mitzbar, Numbers 29. Uh, 
And then we can read what Yah says, beginning at the 35th verse, uh, concerning that these are the Mu'addim. These are the convocations of Yah's celebration to celebrate Him, to celebrate His magnificent power. The palm branches and the magnificent trees, uh, they represent those things that uh, there's nothing that draws the water from the soil like this. And that is what this feast is all about. Water. Mayan. Yoshua is the living water. He caused a living well to flow from Yisraya. It's all about that. We have complications of doing that, waving at her. And Yah commands us to do it. But we say we love him. We're damn liars. And that's what it represents. Because he has, he has showered down the former and the latter rain. The crops are plentiful. We have brought them into the storehouse. He has poured out his ruach among Israel. He has sent us the messages, the messages that are vital to our nefesh. And we should have had great increase. And when you came into Yerushalayim, you should have came with the wavering of the offering unto your shouting. For all he has done, but because we are dry wells, you can't do it. I don't give a damn if you studied 50 years. The proof of the essence of what has been produced in us, it will be representative of our actions and our deeds. When a man plays football and he practices the very definitives of everything that must be done to run the pattern correctly, he is bad to the bone. He is precise. And they will ordain him as a superstar. When a man goes on there and shoots that basketball for two or three hours a day, make sure he shoots a thousand, two thousand shots a day, uh, then it becomes uh, a natural flow. I don't care where he is on the court, he will hit the jump shot. That's a fact. We must be skilled students of the Torah of Yah. Skill. And when a man has something, uh, he shows what he has in his actions and his deeds toward Yah. Moving quickly. It says here in the book of Weyira, Leviticus 23:36. You are says, seven days you shall offer an offering made by Ish, by fire. And it is the fire of this Torah that flow from our belly. We shall offer that to Yahweh. What is the substance of that fire? That we give Torah unto Yah Yisrael. Isn't that difficult for us to say that? We don't know how to say Torah. I brach you, Yah. And mouse. A fef, a loshon, this language of this damnable thing. It is sealed when it comes to Yah. But start talking about foolishness and watch the volume of a fool. They will talk. Hallelujah. I don't make many friends. I had an ark to call me. He said, you know, Reank, there are preachers that they know of you. When I began to talk about you, there's a silence among them. Everyone gets quiet. He said, any time I mention your name to them, there's a group of them, they get silent. You can mention that preacher, that one, oh, there's a response. Oh, he's a tough brother. You mentioned Reach, with Israel. He said, they get silent. They get quiet. And there is no response. That's all right. I don't mind that. I'm not their enemy. They're their own worst enemy. Hallelujah. You don't receive a messenger that is simple as I am. Not one that is grandizing. Live simple. Come on. An offering made by far. He tells us on the eighth. She may need. On the eighth day uh, shall be a nigra chodash uh, too. It shall be one that is celebrated by us. Uh, and you shall offer an offering made by fire to Yah. He says it is an atara. It is a solemn. It is a time of festivity whereby our minds and our thoughts must be upon Yah. There must be a, a conscientious uh, concentration. On the things of Yah, it is a solemn assembly. He said, and you shall do no laborious work. You shouldn't labor. You should not pamper your flesh. You should not labor to accommodate your flesh. Because we are coming to the hour that all laboring will cease. 
You're not going to get it right. You're not going to get it right tomorrow. When your shoe comes, you can't get it right. You're not going into the tribulations to get it right. You're going to be right because the tribulations will be the fire of Yah to prove the essence of our bosom. He is not withholding his Torah from pouring it into our lab until the tribulation. We must understand that the Acharun began, the Akaruth began, when Yahshua gave up the Ruach on that stake. That began the last days. That began the last days. And we're in the latter hour of the last of the three days or the last two days. When the last hour, Yisra'ya, the Acharuth began when he gave up the Ruach. We're in the Acharith, the last days of Almighty Yah. Yisra'ya, we're in that. And so he gives us an informative design of this day. That we should do no labor. We should offer up unto Yah. And that is simply a shacha. It is a worship. It shows our appreciation. It shows our todah for Yah. So we shall enter into his presence with that singing and dancing and rejoicing and offering up pala, prayer, prayer unto Yah that we intercede and we seek the Almighty Yah. We must do that. We must. We're not going to get it right when the most terrifying time upon the earth come upon us. He commands us to be ye perfect as he is to be you Chadosh Kodash as Omariya is and so we must understand where the revival or the new beginning or the renewing begins in Yisra'ya and there was one by the name of Shaul as he writes unto one of his most prominent Ach student at Torah Titus the book of Titus he says something that is prophetically profound to us in Titus chapter 3. I would have began here at verse 3. He says, for we ourselves also were sometime evil. We've never been foolish, have we? He said we were disobedient. We have not been disobedient, have we? Have you been deceived? He said deceived. This is a generation that is full of arrogance, uh, thinking that he or she has never been deceived. We were foolish, disobedient, deceiver, uh, not made the heart in man. It is deceitful uh, above all things, and it is desperately wicked. Uh, hallelujah. I'd rather be deceived than to be bewitched. Oh, foolish Galusia. Who have bewitched you that you should not obey the Torah? Yeah. Whose eyes evidently your sure was in peril before you? There's a difference between being deceived and bewitched. When one's mind is bewitched, it is led by the government of Hashatan. We've all been deceived. This is a descriptive analogy of us all. We were disobedient, deceived. And I'm quite sure we have not been servants uh, of different lusts and all kinds of vile pleasures. Uh, our imaginations, the concepts of our minds, our thoughts. Uh, we were living in malice and angry and this lustful, uh, sensual pleasure. And also here he said envy. The multiplicity of activities in one mind. We were hateful. Oh, I love your damn lawyer. You've always been hateful. Can't you tell when a dog is hateful? Huh? When that dog began to growl. That nose began. You know. You know. It's either you better growl like him. Or you better drop down like him. And come toward him. Or he is going to do you some damage. We've been a hateful people. We have been a hateful people. He said hateful. And then he said hating one another. Oh, I have never shown you. Uh, King, the great analogy brought unto us. Uh, that if there is the perfect uh, uh, 
of Yah, then there is the perfect shone. And the shone of Yah is like you despising one as an enemy, and you will take the sword and run it through him. You will kill him. We've been hateful. We've been hateful toward Yah. We've despised him. We've lived like swines, Yisrael. But he said, but after that the kindness and the achava of Yah, our Yoshach, toward man, appeared. What kindness was that? Titus 3, 4, Yoshua. Let him arise in us. Let the eduth of Yah arise in us. Let the testimony of Yahshua arise in us. This is what this akarith of this yam akarith is for. That the power that should resonate in the last days uh, as we have seen the bountiful blessings of Yah, as we have examined ourselves, uh, that we rejoice greatly. He reminds us not by works of sadiq, of righteousness, and we think that we are righteous workers. Oh, I studied the Torah. That, what does that mean? And there's no practical uh, demonstration of that in your life. The Torah commands us to love Yisrael. 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 I can't say that I love my wife if I'm cold toward her. If there is no intimacy, love is an intimacy, man. Come on, woman. Hell, you talk that talk. But you got to walk the walk, man. Come on, woman. We will have some of the most vilest individuals, our wicked sons and daughters, uh, knowing they are wicked. We rather make covenant with them. We may rather go into a covenant and a legion and an alliance uh, with them when it comes to Yisrael. We just don't give a damn. Yeah. Not by works of righteousness which we have done, but according to his nachan. His hasits, his tender kindness of mercies. By the mercies of Yah, he delivered us, he yoshach us. By the washing, listen, by the washing, this is a time of regeneration, Yisra'ya. This is a time of chadash. By the washing of our minds uh, and the regeneration, and look what he says, uh, and the renewing of the Ruach uh, HaKodesh. Uh, it cannot be a new Ruach. It is renewed. We need that to be renewed in us. The renewing of the Ruach HaKodesh. And the only way that's going to happen, we began to identify the sins and the wickedness. Hallelujah. I realize the abundance of his mercies and kindness. Are his mercies renewed every day? Or they knew. They renewed, aren't they? Same mercies, same kindness, the same love that was just a day. Hallelujah. So it must be among Yisra'ya. That we renew our fervor for Yisra'ya, his elect, his house, his bayat. Hell, we care more for the Edomites than we do for Yisra'ya. We embrace the Edomites, but we don't embrace Yisra'ya. Hallelujah. By the Kadash, by the renewing, uh, to refresh, to rebuild, uh, to make new. Uh, someone takes an old house and restores it, uh, it looks new, doesn't it? As a matter of fact, in many cases, it looked better than what it was uh, when you first bought it. I recall I purchased my first home, my Isha and I. We didn't purchase it. We became, in, we became debtors uh, to the slave master. But I took that old raggedy thing. Uh, I refined it and made it extraordinarily beautiful. Uh, I put 50 coats of paint on the bathroom walls. And when you will walk in, the first thing you, wow. But well, that's what paint is for. You put 10, 12 coats of paint over a wall, it does, it makes a different wall. It does. I put at least 50 coats over that wall. And I had some of the most expensive wallpaper that one could ever buy given to me freely. 
that a man works at a store and he gave it to us. Hallelujah. That's what Yah's doing. There must be a regeneration, not a generation, but a renewing, a revitalizing, and that's what coming into Yerushalayim, that's why it's so vital unto us, Yisrael. When you awaken in the morning, are you not revitalized? There's a renewing there, isn't it? And that's what we go from this day in the renewed uh, attitude and character of Yahshua HaMashiach. What you did up until this point, you don't do it anymore. It is not difficult, Yisrael. We are aware of our actions uh, and our deeds. Uh, you can tell a lot about a man. The Torah talks about that, the countenance uh, of a man. You look at a man's forehead, you can tell everything about him. I can. Come on, Yisrael. We're here to strengthen one another. Which Yahshua shared on us abundantly, which Yah shared on us abundantly through Yahshua HaMashiach, our Yahshak. He has shared this abundance of the riches of the dam of Yahshua. Should not there be a renewing of our mind and that we should let the same mind, the Leba that was in Yahshua HaMashiach, it must be in us. And I challenge you all, if you do research on the historical value of words, you will see that the word laba, it includes the mind and the heart. It is, uh, it is one. This natural thing does nothing but by the order of the heart here. It simply pumps blood. And when you say you feel something in your heart and your gut, uh, it is this telling uh, that your gut uh, you feel something. So when we get back to the pure language, uh, we will see that this is how the, the corruption of the mind of man uh, tried to translate it. Uh, but it is the leba, it is the lab, uh, it is the lab, uh, it is all intertwined uh, and physically one thing. Not to. Uh, you don't feel a depth, you don't love from here. There's no love come out of that. It's nothing but a muscle. Pum pum. And this is so amazing. It is nothing but a glob of cholesterol. That's all it is. Goosh. But it thinks. It commands that. It regulates the beat of that. It regulates the pouring of the blood through the arteries to the vein. That is amazing there. That is amazing, man. No. Nothing like it. Nothing like it. You don't love him from here. You love him from here. And from here. This is the centrality of the nucleus, of the command center of the nefesh. Here, not here. I will. And I come with a sword too. I shall do that. Hallelujah. 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 We must have this renewing, this Kadash. We must have this renewing, uh, and it must begin by the washing. We wash ourselves, cleanse ourselves uh, from all filthiness of the flesh and the ruach, uh, and began to tomim, perfect, to make whole, complete, to do that which is rightful before Yah. His kadosh nature. Now we become kadosh. Set apart. Gems and jewels. Uh, for the house of Yah. We become diadems. Uh, in his crown. Hallelujah. Yeah. We become diadems. In the crown. The jewels. Uh, and that's what we are with. The jewels of his crown. How big is his head? You think it's that big? You think his head is big as our head? Come on Yisrael. Yeah. He is so big you can't get over him. So wide you can't get around him. So he doesn't need a little crown. His casse, heavens is his throne. And the earth is his footstool. Talk to me. So little itchy bitchy tiny weedy weedy crown ain't going to work on that head. So you understand? So he needs some jewels to put in there. He needs some jewels and some, and some beautiful uh, 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 ornaments in his crown. 
That's what he needs, Yisra'iah. He needs beauty around his kesse, his throne. You think Shalomo had a throne, that ain't nothing. He had to cover that throne of ivory with the purest of gold. He's going to cover his throne with the testimony of the Edutha of Yisra'iah. Hallelujah. There shall be a fountain of the pure water before his throne. The testimony of the prayers of his people. Oh, that sounds somewhat mystical. I know it sounds that way. Yeah? To you wise ones and you that have this intellectual learning. But to me it sounds real. I hope in that. I have a trick there in that Yisra'ya. I want to proceed a little farther, all right? Shaul speaks here in the book of Colossia, Colossia, Colossians chapter 3. And it's one thing that we must do, Yisra'ya. We must begin to impel, to mortify, to kill it, to make dead the deeds and the actions of our corrupt affections. He speaks unto the scattered host of Yisra'ya in Colossia, Colossians 3, 9. He tells us this to Shekhar. Shekala not one to another. Don't tell each other lies. Don't lie to Yah. Don't commit a vow. And you know you're not ready to fulfill it. Lie you're not one to another. Seeing that you have put off the old man with his deeds. The matter of the flesh. We have put that off. We have, killed, we have destroyed the man of the flesh. He says in verse 10. And we have put on the renewed man. We have put on Yisra'iah, the Kadash, the renewed man, the invigorated man. We have put on uh, the renewed man. Uh, where is this man? The new man, uh, which is renewed uh, in the knowledge after the image of him uh, that created Yeshua. We have been renewed, Yisra'iah. Yes. And when something gets renewed, you can't help but looking at it. Uh, an old dilapidated house is not appealing. Uh, what am I began to walk in the power of the Ruach? You got to notice him. Uh, there's something invigorating and powerful about that one. Uh, we have been renewed. We have been renewed, Yisraeliah. We have been Kadash. Our minds have been made new, have been renewed. They have been restored uh, to the plentiness and the abundance uh, of Torah knowledge and revelation. And would a man like that understand the beauty of what he did with me, with Yisrael and Misraim, when he brought him back? You can't sit still. Yeah. That's why he brings us to this time. You celebrate in the Sukkot, in the booth, because what work I did there, I want them to tell the generation after generation of my mighty works that your children may dance and shout and rejoice. And the abundance of my power, we don't tell that. That's what this is all about. Uh, that we will not forget, Yisra'ya. Yeah. They forgot for 900 years. Yeah. And when their hearts were made right to obey, uh, when the reading of the Torah was read, uh, and the Nobi, Ezra, as he read, uh, and the Nobi of Yah stood up, uh, and the Torah read, what do we do to rectify? Even if you don't know, you began... Today when you hear, today when you hear the voice of Yah, you don't alter that. You don't harden your heart. I don't care if you have not kept the feast for 50 years. But the day when you hear, you commit to what Yah commands you. You commit to that. It is just like a man that's kept it 30 years. He has done it 30 years, but he has not guarded it. No, he hasn't. Hallelujah. He hasn't guarded it. And that's the truth, Yisra'iah. We have been renewed, Kadash, in the knowledge. We must be renewed in the knowledge. This old form of knowledge, this da'at, this ability to discern and to recognize what is of Yah, it's got to be thrown out. Cast that damnable trash out of your mind. We need the mind of Yahshua. Hallelujah. Do we have to have Yahshua's heart? Shaul said unto the Philippians, unto the, uh, the, the gathering, that let the same mind that was in your shoe be in us as well. The mind is the dictate of the heart, Yisra'iah. When we get our minds right, then our hearts, uh, this mind will love you. Hallelujah. Come on, the issues flow out of the heart 
flow the issues of life uh, out of my. You think it's coming from this? Uh, boom, boom, boom. No, it's coming from here. Our issues be gone here. And the enemy has tricked us and made us ignorant. Because these lawn dogs rather drive a Cadillac uh, and a Mercedes Benz uh, than to study the Torah of Yah and understand uh, the definitive of Yah's speech. We must have men to do that. You just can't read this. Come on, Yisrael. We must study and listen to those that Yah has commanded to teach us. Before Yahshua said that he descended, he gave gifts unto men, not to women. He did not name them all a shulishach. He did not make them all a nobi. He did not make them all a bearer of the bizorach, of the Torah teaching of Yah. He did not make them all reach. He did not, Yisrael. Yeah. He did not. And that is the truth. He did not make them all more a teacher. And he made some. Not cold, but some. You said right? All right. Yasha. Straight talk. It is right. He didn't make them all. He made some. And true messenger would say, shut your mouth. You don't, man, stop that. You're talking ignorant. We don't want that because of our pride. No one tells me nothing. You can't tell me. You're going to die in your wickedness, man. Woman, stop that. Had a woman to call me one day. My issue, she heard it. She, she blessed me to hell and the deep corridors of hell. But I tried to find a number to call that Jezebel back because I would have and say, what kind of a weak, spindrift daddy of a man of a husband you got permission to call me? You don't know me, woman. You may pull that on him, but you Jezebel, you, I would have called her a Isabel, an Isabel. You harlot of hell. You vile harlot. You calling me? I'm trying to rob me of the essence of you. You will go to hell, you vile Jezebel. You won't get by with me with that dirty talk. My husband and my son gave me command, and I have the authority. And she. Whew. I look for that ID. What a coward she hit it. She didn't want me to call her back because I was straight in the Jezebel. That's what she was, a Jezebel. No woman corrects a man. You don't correct him. You don't call her to correct me. Hallelujah. May I move a little further, please? <clears throat> Hallelujah. Shaul speaks of the regeneration and the reconciliation of Yisra'iah, and it only comes through one measure and only one way. As he writes unto the elect, the scattered there in Corinthia, 2 Corinthians chapter 5. I want to read this. We must go in a renewed vigor on this tremendous Yom Gadol Achricha, the last great day. He says here in the book of Corinthians, hallelujah, 517, he said, therefore, if any man be in Hamashiach, he is a renewed. If we have the power of that Eda, Yah's testimony, then Yah said that man is a Kada, she is a renewed man. He has been made new, refresh. He has been restored. If any man be in Yeshua Hamashiach, he is renewed, a renewed creature. You will know the power of that man because all things, uh, they pass away. His habitual acts and his deeds, his actions, they are passed away. Uh, and behold, all things have become uh, renewed. Uh, he sees things in a different light. So we should go from this uh, Moat uh, with renewed insight. On the things of Yah, the wisdom of Yah. We grow in the strength and His love daily. And it makes us stronger. 
It makes us more vibrant. It makes us warriors of the Imuna, the faith of Yah, in Yeshua. Because uh, it is the power of that testimony that renews our mind. It kadash. He will keep us in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on him. He renew it constantly all the day. We must be renewed. It has to be. If you know anything about the agriculture side of things, as the food began to produce off the vines, it is one thing you must do every day. You must water it. I'm not talking about a dipper. You must supply water to the plant. And as we began to grow fruit, we must be supplied the living water. We must draw from the living well. We must be supplied with the water of Hashemayim. We must drink this water. Yoshua says, I, I have water. You will drink from that well. We drink from our well and we get thirst every day. He said, but I have water that when you drink from this, you will not need any more. It will quench all of your thirst. And we have been drinking from the dry cistern. His Torah is a living water. It's, it's from the Mayim. And we must drink that to refresh us. When something is renewed, it is refresh. It is refresh. He did not destroy man and made a new man. He kept the same man and renewed him. He's going to keep the same earth and renew it. Yes, he is. We're going to labor. And we're going to make sure it's done right. How beautiful that's going to be. Hallelujah. Won't need no Geritol. Won't need no hunts. We're just going to eat. From the tree of life. We're going to drink the water that flows from the throne of Yah. That sounds all right to me. I don't have no problem with that. You may. But I have no problem with that. Hallelujah. No whatsoever. And that's the truth. These are concepts or a, an order as to the renewing of the Kadash, the restoring, the renewing. I want to bring some validity to the reading of Yeskel, Ezekiel, in the book of Ezekiel, 11.14. Now this is that Yah speaks toward those that are in his people, that are in Shibuth. And Shibuth is a captivity, not just of the natural, biological, physical apparatus of man, but it is of the spiritual Shibuth of the captivity of man too, of Yisrael. It is not the physical ca captivity that has us in trouble, it is the mental. And that is why Hashatan is doing everything to assault that. And to bring us under this uh, controlling power by his surmising nature. Was he not the most subtle creature in the garden? He was slick to the bone, if you must say, as they would say in our days. He was slick as a coon cat. You understand? He was slick. And so Yah utters through the voice of this Yeskel, the Novi, to speak unto us in this hour. He said there will come a day when he says uh, it is finished. And when he gives up the ruach, uh, it ushers us into a time and a dispensation uh, whereby just the reading of the Torah is not going to be sufficient. Uh, it's going to have to be something that's within us. Uh, he's going to have to put something in us. That's why he put the ruach uh, HaKodesh in us. Uh, that's why he came to, he sent the ruach to seal us. Uh, he knows that we have no power of defense uh, against the workers of hell. Uh, and so he calls the Nabi to speak. Uh, this is not for the tribulation. It is to have this uh, to go into the tribulation. Uh, this was the promise after that most beautiful day that you all sure finished the labor of Yah. When he got up out of the grave three days and three nights, uh, the body was not corrupt. Uh, there was no stench. Uh, he did not smell like a rotten thing. Uh, and the skin worms uh, did not even begin to eat upon him uh, at all. Uh, 
Yah says, I'm going to have to revive my people. He is not. Yah must always have a covenant or a bread with his people. And a bread is his allegiance, his alliance. He's married to us. He cannot leave us alone. Although we're wicked as hell, he has not left us alone. That's why he says, I am young, and I don't change. What I promised him to Abraham, I can't go back. He said, I want to tell you something, you hard-headed knuckleheads. He said, therefore, you sons of Yaakob, because of my word, I cannot lie. You're not consumed that I wouldn't kill all of you. He said, I can't go back. I can't change my word. Reading from Yeskel Ezekiel, chapter 11, verse 14 beginning. The messenger of Yah said again, the Zaba of Yah came to me, or it bore it into, into my bosom, saying, as he began to Alma, he uttered. The word came to him with great utterance. He doesn't speak. These liars today that say that Yah speaks to them, listen, Yahshua speaks to Yisrael. They're damn liars. You always hear them. Their God does speak to them. I have no compunction with that. Because their God is a damn dog. He's a beast. He's Hoshatan. He does talk to them. I have no problem with that. He construe, he twists, he distort the Torah. He said the word came unto me. And the word came in its Hebraic content. It is bull. It is to enter in. That's just like it is Hayel. A Haya. When y'all say I am, what are you saying? That the word says I am. Haya. It came in. It entered in. It took root in my bosom. He uttered this unto me. He called him Ben Adam. He said man, son of man. He says your ak, your brothers. Even your ak. The men of your nation, of your kindred, and all Bayat Yisraya, holy, the entire house, cool, all of them. He said, Are they to whom are they to whom the inhabitants of Yerushalayim have said, those that are false, those that inhabit Yerushalayim, the damn liars and the thieves. Have they said to them, those that inhabit, have no rightful place in Yerushalayim, have no rightful authority over the Torah, and we respect them. We are the rabbi. We are the rabbi. Damn the rabbi. Have the inhabitants of Yerushalayim, have they said, stay away from Yah? They don't even want you to call his name. They don't want you to call the name of Yahshua HaMashiach. Is that now? Then everything that follows after this is now. I'm not here to make friends. You either my friend or you're not. I will, man. Have they said you stay away from Yah? To us, is this land given uh, in possession? Uh, no, it's given to Yisra'ya. To the true lineage of Yisra'ya. They've been scattered abroad. It's amazing that these little men wear these little beanies uh, and they wear their tizzles uh, and they walk around and we give such great regard to them. Uh, and a man, a messenger, that will not defile the Torah. Damn the Kabbalah. Eyes yeah. ain't not repenting. Now, I want to go to Yerushalayim. I want to go to Yisraya, but uh, they may hear this and say, he cannot come here. You go to that country. They let you know before you come in, you can't come in. Truth. You get your visa and all of that, they said, sorry, you said that about this land. No, I'm talking against the invaders and liars of the land. And those that are inhabiting the land that says, uh, Yah's not with you. You got to come to the order of Judaism in order to talk to you. You're a damn liar. You're a damn liar. There were 12 tribes. See them? 
Ruban Shimeon Levi. Yehuda was one. Yehuda was one. God, Naphtali, Achna, Yosef. Talk to me, Yisrael. I'm not afraid to say that. If I never get to Yisrael, that's all right. I'm going, though. And I'm going to need a plane ticket. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm going on his time. And when the train comes, it's not like an Amtrak. Hallelujah. Yeah. It's not, you know, get aboard, get aboard and ride the train. Get, no, it's not for everybody to get on this train. You got to have the right passports. You understand, Yisrael? Have said, stay away from you To us, the Lord has given a possession. Therefore say, this is what the sovereign Yah says. Although I have cast them far off. He have cast us far off. We're far from uh, the land. We're far from our heritage. We are a discombobulated people. We have no identity. We have no certain, uh, uh, certain uh, assurance at all. Unless uh, it is out of the order of the Torah. He have cast them far off among uh, the nations or the heathens. The Goyim. And although I have put who done this? Yah says, although I have put, I have scattered, I have taken them like a, a herd of seeds and scattered them. I tell you what, Oxymion ought to do it. Ought to get some of those uh, kill seeds and we scatter them in here. You, we couldn't find a hundred of them. We put, you couldn't find them. And if you take those seeds and scatter it in the air, the earth of Yah, you can find nothing. And what has happened, the birds of the unclean and the speckled birds have devoured us and came and plucked the seeds up. You can't find them. He said, I have put, I've taken them like a, a hat of seeds. I've scattered them to the four corners and the four ends of the earth. Only Yah is going to regather his people. He's going to do it by the mouth of his nobi. He's going to send the Melakim. And they shall be the ones to go into the field of the harvest. And they're going to separate the damn wicked tar from the righteous. They're going to kill your damn wicked sons and your daughters. That you love more than you love your damn the bastard slip. You shouldn't say that where their bastard slips. When one doesn't love Yah, and one is not of the heritage of Yah, it is the slip of a bastard. Now, I don't give a damn what you say. You can get upset. Hallelujah. Yah says, I will scatter them among the countries, yet I will be to them. He says, listen, now he's going to be to us like a little uh, mikdash place, uh, a little place we come in uh, and pour out offerings unto him. He's going to be like a little place. Great is he is, he's going to be like a little place. And me, I had to, that's what he's going to be like to us. And that's what he liked us, a little, a little place where with our sorrows we go in a little place. And he said, oh yeah, I did. Oh yeah, I have me. He's going to be like a little mikrash place to them in the countries where they shall come. Wherever we shall enter, bow, enter in, he's going to be like a little place of, we can take consolation in He's going to be like a little place we can go and worship him. Come on. For truly my fellowship is with the Abba and with the son of Yahshua Hamashiach. Where two or three are gathered in my name, there shall I also be in the midst, Yisrael. He should be like a little place. This is a little old place. Come on, them whole houses got bathrooms bigger than this. Hallelujah. Therefore say, this says, Yah, I will even gather you from the people. And assemble you out of the countries. Yeah, who said he's going to do it? Yeah. He said, I'm going to gather my people. I'm going to gather you and assemble you out of the countries where you have been put, where I have scattered you. And I will give you the land of Yisraya. It is a promise of restoration. We cannot go into the land of restoration unless our hearts are prepared. It is a promise of Yah. He says, I'm going to gather you. I'm going to renew you. I'm going to bring you into the bosom of Yahshua Hamashiach. And I'm going to bring you back into the land where I promised your forefather, Abraham, Yitzhak, and Yaakov. And that's a promise. How do I know it's his promise? Because it's his Dabah. The word promise is his word, Dabah, expressed the same way. He said it. I believe it. That's enough. It's settled. 
Hallelujah. He said, I have promised you the land of Israel. And they shall come to the land that they shall take away all the detestable things. He began to... We began to remove those things that are vile and detestable. We began in the Erich of, our, of this nation here. Are we not a Kadosh nation individually? Are we not a royal priesthood to offer up the offerings unto God? We're not that. So we began by removing the most damnable, wicked, detestable things in our minds, Yisraya. He said, detestable things thereof and all of the, to Abba, the abomination, the perfect first things uh, from uh, there. Hallelujah. And I will give them, I will give them, Lev Ekad, one heart that is the same. And I will give, and I will give, he will not thine. He will not thine. He will bestow, he will grant. He will allow to overtake, overcharge. I will give. He said, I will put, I will not find. He said, I will put, what kind of heart he's going to put? What in us? A what? Hadash, a new, a renewed, uh, a fresh and renewed, invigorated ruach within us. We've had the damn Holy Ghost lie. And the Holy Ghost is the damn deceit, de deceivable demon. He said, I'm, go I'm going to put the renewed ruach in you, Yisraya. Damn the Holy Ghost. Damn any ghost. How many of you all as young when someone said, ghost? You the oldest thing? Oh, no, she's got you beat, mama. All right. No, she's got her beat in age. So if the ghost, when I was a kid, we were what? Cast with a friendly ghost. Hell, how is a ghost friendly? That's why the enemy set up his demise and destruction and his seduction unto the people as children he trained us. Casper the friendly, the friendly little ghost. He was a damn demon. Yeah. And so they told me, you need the Holy Ghost. Oh, you got to That's crazy as hell. You give a damn what you say. That's crazy. That's insane. That's nutty. That's fruity. That's fruity. <laughs> Hell, they don't do that in some of the most demonic uh, religions. That Holy Ghost is a damnable thing. Stay away from him. Hmm? I want to renew the Ruach of Yah. Hallelujah. I want that. Damn the Holy Ghost. Damn it. Maybe damn. Damn it. And that's where we messed up. Put the Holy Ghost in us. We need the ruach, the breath of his life. That brings life unto Torah. So we hear the Torah of Yah. We would delight. We hear his name. It causes our hearts to cry. We hear the name of his son. It makes us rejoice. We hear the name of the damn pagan lion, Jesus and Yesu. It causes us to cause us to snarl like a beast, like a lion, not so. Yeah. You cannot have duplicity. That's a damn hypocrite. He did not have a name created by one of the most devilish, wicked minds upon the nations of the earth. He didn't have a damn Latin name, a Greek name. He had a name of his birth. He was a Hebrew. He was of the lineage of Ibram. 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 Oh, you can pronounce it Ibri. That's all right. I have no problem with that. Okay. I recall this woman writes me. She said, your Hebrew is notorious. The way you butchered the language. I said, because I enunciated one way, woman, I said, a person from New York may enunciate the word differently than one from the Midwest. I said, your problem is that I did. I said, here you sit here and listen to me all the time. You tell me this, this mighty man of God because I said, shut your damn mouth, woman. You think you're going to teach me? No. No. I said, come on, woman. You look like a hog of a woman. She was. You have no discipline and no strength. And so the, the phonics or the speech of words sound different as one enunciates. Yeah. 
You knew what I meant, didn't you? Why were you listening? You said you're led by the Ru'ach Yah. Those that are the sons of Yah, they're led by the Ru'ach. Why would you listen to me? When I began to cut on your fat hips, you didn't like that. She was a beast of a woman. She was a beast of a woman. She was just not an overweight woman. She was a beast of a woman. Now just don't mess with me, woman. If you leave me alone, you won't have no problem with me. Just listen. Now I'm going to say something that will put your hide on fire. You're not going to like it. I heard you say that women are not called. I've helped so many times. You haven't helped anyone. You help these weak men that sit under you. Come on, looking at you sitting under you, woman. I wouldn't sit under you. I know that's right. Hallelujah. He has not given the woman that strength. Let me read that again. Yes, girl, 1119. Yah says that I will not find, I will give them a left ikat, and I will not find, I will put. Now, this is the word I had. I want to define this in its Hebraic format. And I had to write this down. The word nathan, it is to give, bestow, grant, permit, ascribe, employ, devote, consecrate, dedicate, pay wage, sell, exchange, lend, commit, entrust. You tell me, yeah, entrust us? Entrust, give over, deliver up, yield, produce, occasion, produce, requit, to report, mention, utter, stretch out, and extend. When y'all uses that word, it has a, a multiplicity of meaning. We're only 3,200 words in the Hebraic language. America, the English vernacular has over 15,000. And they add nearly 3,000 words every year. You don't even. It is the language of Babel. It is a confusing language. So we must get back and labor to define things in the way of his pure sense to Yah's people. That we will get clarity of matters. There is no duplicity in what Yah speak. What I'm saying, duplicity there is not. He says, as one would say, talking out the side of his mouth. What he says, he means. It is defined in what he says. And all of us from our own equal social background, we define words uh, in the cognates uh, of our own understanding. It is wrong. I will, man. He said, I will, uh, I will, uh, I will not find a hadash or a fresh renewed uh, ruach within you. He said, I will take away the stony love. Now, uh, the mind that is uh, encased with sin and of on uh, wickedness. The stone out of the flesh that I will not find, I will give them a laba or a heart of baza of flesh. That's what Yasef will give us. How it's going to come. Well, it's going to come by the Brits Milah, the circumcision. And if you look in the Torah, you will see on the eighth day uh, that Abraham Yitzhakhi circumcised him. And that was the new birth. Uh, that was the beginning uh, of the sons of Yisrael on the eighth day. And if you search the Torah and look at what eight signifies, you will see everything it does. Uh, after the great jubilee, uh, on the eighth year, you rested. Uh, after the seventh year, you rested everything. Uh, and then uh, in the eighth year, you saw the new beginning uh, of life. Uh, so the great last day of the feast is, uh, it is to promote, uh, to propagate in us this new beginning, uh, a new invigorated desire. That we get real with Yah. That we be sincere. Hallelujah. 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 He says, yes, scale 1120. Why? He said he's going to get, listen now, he's going to give us the renewed ruach. That's what he said, didn't he? He's going to put a renewed ruach in us. Why? For this reason, that they may walk in my statutes. That's why Yahshua says, uh, I must go. If I do not, then the Abba cannot send the ruach HaKodesh. And when he comes, he will not testify of himself, but of the things he has, Shemach, he has heard. But this is what he said. He said, I will give you uh, I will take out the stony heart. See, that's all has to happen. Listen, Yisraya. Once we begin to destroy this old damn corrupt mind, this so hard that it's wicked, and let Yah Baza or create, and the word Baza Bara is only a word associated with Yah. It is a creation only Yah can do. He has to do it. 
And look what he says. He said, I will put, I will not on the ruach within you and take away the stony heart and the flesh and give them a heart of flesh. And then in verse 20, why is he going to do this? For this reason, that they may halach, walk, strive in my hook, my statues. You see what the renewed heart does? It causes us to walk in the statue. Come on, Yisrael, this is not for something over there. It's for now. That they may walk in my statue. He said they may shema, they may keep, preserve my ordinance, my mitzvah. And they may what? Do them. Do them. Do them. To asa, to perform them, to allow them to fashion them. And it's not for some there, those that say that he will not write his story in us uh, until... Uh, uh, no, we're in the premises of Yah, in Yahshua. Yeah. We're in the premises. Yeah. He's not something by and by. Hell, we cannot make it uh, if he doesn't do that. Uh, he said, I must put my ruach in you. I must send the ruach HaKodesh uh, that you will do and keep and guard. Uh, you saw they cannot do it without it. Uh, it's not enough for us alone. That's why it's not the excellent thing for me to be alone. Because we teach things that are absolutely wrong. Because you really doesn't need you understand it. Wisdom is principle. You got to get an experience with Yah. But in all our tell we need to have. Uh, now we need that being understanding, the power to discern the elements of His truth. He said, I will put my ruach in you. You think that God has given us the ruach for us to walk like wild fools? Come on, Yisraya. I say to men, I, oh, my learning has come from listening. I learn from listening to children, to little babies. I learn. That's how my whole life has been. By listening to people. I was sat at my mentor's feet for hours. I say, talk to someone. He says, boy, I got to go to bed. But your wife, I'm not thinking about no wife. I'm thinking about what he's saying. This is my strength. If I hear this, this transform me, then I will be a husband to her. Turn that on those some a little bit. If it's... He said, I'm going to do that, that we may walk in my statutes and keep my ordinance and do them. And he said, and then they shall be my people and I will be their bar. Will he hold any tough thing from us that walk upright? He's going to write his Torah. He has written his Torah in the bosom of Yisraya. He has written it in our inward parts and in our minds. He has hidden it from the scurrilous attack of hell. That's why the enemy could not, uh, he could not pollute Yahshua. Although he bared all of our sins in that body, he could not pollute him. We cannot pollute what he has put in us. He has hatab. He has written us. That's why he must renew it. That's what this time represents a renewed, a kadash, a renewed spirit, a reinvigoration of our passion and desire for young. I want to show us another example. What Yahshua said, hallelujah, here in the book of Matithiah, Matthews. This is when Yahshua instituted the time of what we call Pesach, the Last Supper. And there are those that say that you shouldn't do that. These are fools. But he says here in the book of Matthew, 26, 9, 29, 26, 29. But I say to you, he says this. It was a Nazarite. He said, but I say to you, I will not drink henceforth, or I will not drink anymore of this fruit of the vine. I will not drink of this fruit of the vine. This peri that has produced the ya yen. The ya yen. Now listen now. He says, until the day... When we drink it, Kadash, new or renewed, with you in my Abbas Melkut. Now, I know that that has a tremendous literal, figurative application. When we truly began to walk in the kingdom of Almighty Yah and Yahshua, he will sit down at the table of the Abba and we shall drink the Yah Yen of the renewed fruit of Yah. That we may bring forth the abundance of Yah's fruit. And once this is what this time is for, on this last great day that we sit 
in the Melchuts of Yah. Where's the kingdom of Yah? The kingdom of Yah is not in eat and drink, Yisrael. That's not the Melchuts of Yah. Come on! But it's in the power of the demonstration uh, of the word of Yah that perfects us. And so we began to walk in the milk of the kingdom. Uh, he will sit down. Come on, sit down, son. We're going to drink a little bit. And then when we, as Yisrael, Yah, when we are renewed and regathered, we're going to sit down. It's going to be a physical thing. We sit and drink the yayin, the wine. That's what the yayin. Isn't the yayin, there were four different stages of wine. And the yayin was the most choice. It was called the yah, yah, yayin, yayin. It was the, the purest of the press of the wines. You understand the first press, the beauty. Was that not the refresher unto Yisrael? That's what this day is. That's why we sit and we drink the wine, the yayan, or the beauty of Torah. And it mollifies, it heals us. It, 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 it gives us the resolve that we need in the midst of, the, of, of this most tremendous battle. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. That's what we need. Back, back to Yeremiah. Hallelujah. Yeremiah 31, 32. I wanted to inject that. Yeremiah 31, 32. 31. I want to read this. I wanted to read that to get back to here to show you this. The renewed covenant began when, uh, after the death of Yahshua. Now look at this in Yeremiah. Back to Yeremiah 31, 31. I, I do apologize for not telling you to hold on to that. He says, Behold, Chayam, the day come, says Yah, that I will make a renewed bread. Listen to this. He said, I will renew the breads with Beit Yisraya and Beit Yahuda, that they shall be one. He said, I'm going to renew my covenant with those that are the outcasts, or those that are scattered. Listen to what he says now. He must always have an allegiance with his people. And what he is saying, that he's going to bring the power of life to covenant, uh, to the revelation of Yahshua, that we will not walk as in the blindness of our, of our walk in. We won't have to walk that way, my Yeshua. He said, I'm going to renew it. My allegiance will be something uh, that is in the bosom of Yisrael. It will not be uh, on a tablet of stone that they go see. Uh, it will be written in their hearts and their minds. Uh, and they will sit in the Ruach HaKodesh. Uh, will draw from that. Uh, he's not going to wait till the tribulations to write it there. He's doing that now to regather us, Yisraya. That's why he's putting the renewed Ruach in us. That we may sit down at the table of Yah. Verse 32. He said, not according to the bread that I made with the, their Avat. In the days that I took them by the hand to bring them out of the land of Misraim. Which my bread, they broke. They broke the covenant. They broke it. Although I was uh, a husband to them, says Yah. But this shall be the Brit. Now, Yah is telling us, he said, this shall be the Brit that I will make with Bayat Yisrael after those days. What days? After those days uh, that the offering uh, was fulfilled. That's what the sacrifice was always for, uh, to reconstitute Yisrael back uh, into the covenant alliance uh, with all murder Yah. And that's what your shoe is for, huh? to reconstitute us uh, and to bring us into the living covenant of Yah. That is spring forth from our belly. Yeah. Yeah. You don't have to go read it. We spring forth uh, from our bellies from life. Uh, talk to me. Yeah. 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 Hallelujah. Yeah. After those days, I like that. After those days, he prophesied of a time, Naba. After those days, after those days, after tribulation, no, after those days. Now, you know, listen now. He says, After, he says, uh, Hallelujah, the covenant, your know, husband. He said, But this shall be the bread that I will make with you in verse 33. With Beit Yisraya, after those days, says Yah, I will not find my Torah in the inward part and write it in their lips. Something is wrong as we don't have the Torah delight in us. That we said that my delight is in the Torah of Yah all day. He had it in his bosom because he meditated upon the Torah day and night. 
Come on, Yisrael. He said, I will put right it in their love, their leba, and I will be their abba, and they shall be my people. Are we his people? Are we his people? Is he our abba? He our yahya. Come on. I'm not ashamed to say yes. I am his people. I am his um, people. So if we have not this in us, we are not the people of Yah. If we have not the renewed Ru'ak, we have not the Torah in us, we are not the people of Yah. We are people of Hashatan. That's why we got to understand definitives that were not I mean to grant, to permit, to bestow. He said, we'll put my Torah in the inward parts. Why? That the enemy cannot uh, aggressively uh, rip it out. He's talking to whole Yisra'ya. He said, in the heart I will be there, Aban, they should be my people. Verse 34. And then he says, uh, and then they shall teach no man, every man, his neighbor. In essence, he is saying, uh, you won't need nobody to tell you this, the mitzvah of Yah. Come on. Who needs someone to teach them that? He said, and you will need every man, come on, no man anymore teach his neighbor, and every man his brother saying, this is what they will say. This is what they will say. You don't have to have one to teach you to say, yada, do you know? Have you experienced yada? See, we just not, cannot read, we must read every word, and we must put every word in its precise order and its place. The word, they will say, no, or yada. The word yada, to experience to have a relationship with that produce wisdom. That is what yada is. When you say, I know yada, you said, I yada, I've experienced him. Man, you don't have to teach me how to experience yada. Don't you share these line whole houses. They say, oh, you want the Holy Ghost? Come on, just say, come on, talk to me. That's how they do it. Come on, let your tongue back and go. See, that's what he is saying, my bath. Uh, that we will need no man to teach us. You, Yada, have you experienced Yah? Have you really experienced him? Oh, I've experienced him in the inside of the Torah. I've experienced Yah. Yada, you will need no man to teach you the experience of Yah. Come on, Yisrael Yah. That is what he is saying. You need nobody to teach you the experience of Yah. We must be taught the statutes and the hukmah and the guidance of Yah. Why? Because we can never have imuna unless we are taught. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the Torah of Yah. How can one preach unless he is sent by Yah? That's why he said, I've given them ears to hear, and they cannot hear. I want to hear. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. I wish I could do it like Zakane. I get crazy. I'm glad that these ark have the balance. I don't have the beauty of the balance they have, all right? I get fruity. I get nutty. They have such beautiful temperament. Make you jealous. It's all right to be jealous, to be provoked unto tough words. Me, I'm in heathen. Have no tack. That's all right. Well, I emulate them. I like to see Zakir. He gets up here. You see him, you know, his, his matterism and how he teaches us. Wow. I'm the one that just cry loud. And we need that, we need the excellence of the speech. Because that tempers what I say. Hallelujah. Let me close, let me move on. Hallelujah. I don't have much. Whether I have much or not, I'm not going to omit anything because of our emotions, feelings. And they shall teach no man, every man his neighbor, and every man his brother. See, now whole, what is the teaching about? He tells you right here, saying. I'm not saying, yada, ya. Do you know ya? Have you experienced him? He said, for they, for they shall all yada me. From the least of them to the greatest of them, saith ya, says ya. For I will forgive, they will know. I will forgive their ovon, their ovin, their perverse wicked ways. And I will zakha, I remember their hatta no more. I remember the sin no more. No one has to tell me, man, will you sin, but I know I'm forgiven. 
Well, well, you did a bad man. I know ya. As old folks, I know that 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 I know I know I know. So we need no man to teach us and say, do you know ya? Come on, Yisraya, you cannot be in the midst of one of the most hellish battles and someone say, do you know ya? That's why he must put his Torah in us. After those days, what the days of your shoe, because uh, after he went in the grave and he got up uh, and he was, after he was impaled on that stake and he got up out of that grave, uh, he couldn't leave us defenseless. That's why your shoe said, I got to get on back up there. I can't wait around here because the real hawk of death cannot come until I get gone. Now leave me alone, Kefal Thomas. Uh, go on, boy. Let me ascend back to the place. He said, you all go down there where I told you. Down to the room and they were there on Ikad with a card. And all of a sudden they went, woo, woo, like a freight train. <laughs> Katrina was no match for that. But it left everything standing. And the power of the Ruach came in like a mighty Russian wind. And they all began to testify of the power of the excellence of Yah. Talk to me, man. You cannot leave us defenseless. He cannot leave us alone. He cannot forsake us. He said, I'm going to renew this thing. What Moshe gave it to you, I'm going to make it a living way. No man has to teach you, say, yada, yada. You don't have to teach that little child. Rafael may hold over, she yada, mama. She don't think that's your email. Come on, tank back there. You don't have to, come on. You don't have to teach him that's daddy. That's his avat. He knows that. Come on, we're the bane of Yah. You don't have to teach that boy who says, come on, he's the right up. That's all he's saying here. That no man has to teach his neighbor, yada, yada. You don't have to teach that little fella. Come on. He, he, his daddy was doing something for me this morning. He came to me crying. I know he was crying because I was going, dad, mom, but he just doesn't want to say it. That's what he wanted. So he figured, Bobby, I want to go with daddy. Talk to me, Yisrael. Yeah. No man has to teach us that. Yada, yada. Yeah, I know him. You think that little boy, you think he doesn't know? Come on. You don't have to teach him who his daddy. He knows it. He knows his papa. He calls him papa. He knows daddy, daddy. He knows his daddy. So Yah says, no man has to teach you once I put that inspiration in you. It's going to give you renewal and life, Yisrael. Yeah. That's what we need. But well, man, you try to tear us up. No, I'm trying to tear down the, the walls of hell. Yeah. Zakain taught, taught us about them walls. Will you understand what that, that bulwark is? We build these bulwarks to keep Yah out. I'll never forget my natural brother. He had turned away from the simple truth. He was a dynamic teacher. The man had an ability to teach, and that's the truth. He just did. He had a gift. And he turned away, even though we all were ignorant. And I watched that man fall away, and I will never forget, he said to me, he said, every time I get over one wall, the next one is higher. And I can't get over it. That he was in such despair, he gave up. That's the truth. Hallelujah. We can't do this on our own. We have no natural strength to do it. Quickly here, Lamentation. Echa. Lamentations 321, the cries of Yeremiah. This is what he cried, chapter 3, verse 21. And I have a few things I want to share with you to strengthen your heart as we close. Lamentation, Echa, 321. He says, this I recall as shoe, but return back to my mind. Therefore, I have tikva. He said, this is the only thing that gives me hope or tikva. Promises in Yah. It is because of Yah's racham or his mercies that we are not consumed. You understand? His racham is his compassion. And the racham is only Yah's compassion. Only Yah's compassion. 
that we are not consumed because of his racham or his compassion fails not his mercy. This is the beauty for us. They are khadash or renewed every morning. Great is your imuna. They're renewed every day, Israel. They're renewed. It's not, it's not a different one or a new one. It's just renewed. It's hadash. It refreshes us. It restores us. It rebuilds us. That's what it does. And that is why the, the last great day, this, uh, this Yom Achrith, uh, this Yom Gadol Achrith, uh, this last great day, it is to restore us back to what the promises of Yah. That we rejoice in the Dabar, the promises of Yah. He has not left us alone. Never alone. Never. Never. The Torah never went from Yisra'ya. Even though that there were those that tried to obfuscate and tried to alter, distort it. Never. It is with this covenant people. If you take that away from us, we don't have anything. Nothing. He's not going to take it away. That's why he don't allow anyone just to touch the Ark of the Covenant. You touch that, you're going to die. He, don't, he doesn't allow, that's why men are dead. They're in sin, they're walking wickedly. They have no knowledge of the Torah of Almighty God. His Rocham is renewed daily. They're renewed. Great is his imuna. Hallelujah. This is what, as we said, this is what I want. Do we, I, I want to show you something, and we all need this. He cried in the midst of all the agony of his enemies against him. I said that the book of Tehillim and Yachahan are the most intimate writings in the whole book. They are to me. Those two writings are the writers. It's just much intimacy there. A great passion and a great concern, a great, great fervent, a hava, a great repentance. Those two. In the Old Covenant and the, and the Brit Hadassah, the Renewed Covenant, or what we call the New Testament, those are the, that book is one of the most profound ones to me. Hallelujah. But this is what Daiwi said. He says in Tehillim Psalms 51.10, he tells Yata Barra, always an attribute of Yah to form, to shape, to fashion. He says, Yah Barra, create. Barra, in me ya a tacho, a clean lev. Don't we want that? Yeah. And it can only be done by the power of his word did not the torah create man he must put it in us in order for it to create the clean heart it is the torah that speaks out of our bosom that creates the image of Yahshua hamashiach he said do that create me a clean a clean uh lev. he says oh yeah and then he tells him i want you to kadash i want you to renew a good or a firm a spirit of, that's prepared renew a right ruach within me. Renew it. He had the ruach. But renew it. Yeah. We need to renew it. That's what this seven days is a time of plenty to eat, to enjoy. I love cooking for the people. I said to Oxymion, I said, I'm not going to cook like i done in the past. And then I look at him today. And I said, Simeon, you got to get my grill built for next year. Because I want to be able to put a quarter of our beef on that cow, or lamb, goat's meat. I said, I want to line it up and cook and lay a big spread in the middle here. And we're going to eat and enjoy the blessings of Almighty God. So don't eat no meat until then and then. You just eat meat. How about that? We enjoy the blessings of Yah. So he looks at me. You know, Simeon is the kinds of chocolates that I want. My grill man, you understand. Do my grill, okay? Because I want to do it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Create, renew. We need to renew the ruach in us. And the only way it's going to be renewed, it must be by the hearing of Torah to revive that which in us. And we're allowed to be covered with, with, with sin and actions that are not conducive to our growth. That we need to take, we need to clean it up every now and then, not every now, every day, by the mercies of Yah. So that when we hear the Torah of Yah, it gives us great strength, Yisra'yah. That's what we need in us. Again, back to the book of Ikhat, Lamentation. This should be our cry in this hour. Lamentation chapter 5, verse 19. 
You, O Yah, remains Ulam Viat forever. Antiquity, there's no limit to you. To you. He says, your kasse, or your throne, is from generation to generation. Why do you continuously forget us and forsake us so uh, such a long time? Why? Turn you to us. Turn you us to you. Turn us, Yah. Turn Yisraya to you, O Yah. And we shall be turned. See, when he turns us to you, it's the Torah that turns us to Yah. He said, we shall be turned. And he says, renew our kadash, our days as of old. Take us back to the days of ancient. We can't go back to 1932, but renew them, yeah. Renew that day to this day. We can't go back uh, until the day they were brought out of Misraim, uh, but renew that. And that's what this reminds us of. That's what this takes us back to. Uh, it is a new beginning for us all, Yisraya. That's why it is known as the eighth. Shemini. The eighth day. It is the last great day. The last great day of the feast. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Or to conclude here in the book of Tehillim. Psalms 103. Verse 1. A word of strength. Encouragement. To propel us, Yisraya, as a nation, for one thing, that is to Barakya for all of his great kindness, his mercies unto us. Thy weed says, Barakya, O my nefesh, and call all that is within me. Psalms 103, verse 1. He says, Barak, bless his Kodesh name. He says, Barak ya o my nefesh. And let us not forget his gemul, his great benefits. That which he has given unto us. For our recompense, for the reward. Forget not the great benefits of Yah. We can't forget that. Who redeemed our gala, he has redeemed us. And he is our kinsman redeemer, Yahshua. He has redeemed us. He has redeemed uh, who redeems your life uh, from all of this destruction, the pit, the grave, from darkness. He has redeemed us. Who crown us with love, kindness, his chassid, and his tender racham. Like we said in verse 5, he is the one that zobah, he satisfies. Your mouth with tough things. That's why he speaks to us in this hour with tough things. For what? So that your youth is renewed like an eagle. That's why he speaks to us tough things. Feed us tough things to renew our strength. And that's why he spoke to us during the feast days to renew us. And to bring us to the new beginning. That we will soar up like an eagle. And ride above the storms and the traumatic situations. He renew our strength like an eagle, Yisrael. Hallelujah. That's what he has done. Hallelujah. I will close with this verse. It's vitally important. Here in Psalms 104 verse 30. As Daiwi speaks of the mighty power of Yah, how he regulates the course of all things by his word, his Torah. To give us wisdom of the great power of the Almighty, he says here in Tehillim 104, verse 30, he says, You send forth your Ruach. Yahshua said, It's expedient for me that I go away. For I go not away, then the Father, the Abba, will not send. The Ruach HaChodas. The sovereign, yeah, he sends forth his Ruach. And so he does that for what? That they are bara, they are created. He says, and you renew the face of the earth. Tonight, the face of the earth, when we get up in the morning, will be renewed. Are we not earthen vessels? then our pony must be renewed. So we must leave this house 
that we, as we close this season, this Moed of Yom, and as we see the renewing of the earth, even in its times, its season, then our Ru'ang must be renewed that way, Yisrael. There is no time for any of the other things that beguile us or besiege us and offset us. We must become genuine and real with Yah. We can't be pretenders. We cannot. For me to live is your sure. And for my life to expire, it is my gain. Shaul said, although I want to leave and be with him, it is most fitting and best that I stay with you all a while. You may not appreciate me, but it's tough to have someone. There was a man that said to me some time ago, he came all the way to Delaware to visit when I was speaking there. And he says to me, Reak, I will love to gather the masses of those that declare their Hebrews and for you to come and speak to them all. I've been around for a long time and this doesn't excite me, but I've never heard a man that explains it and brings it out to life the way you do. I hear that from a lot of people. I, that doesn't swell my head because as far as this flesh, there is no tough thing. I have nothing that I can accredit me to. I don't have a damn thing. It is Yah. You understand? It is Yah. Someone writes me a letter, says, stinging, profound, right? It's stingy, but it's right, man. Go ahead, preach it, preach on. Yeah, this stings here. This stings here. Yeah, no, 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 this stings. It stings in our buttock. No, it doesn't sting us. There's sting us in this dirty heart. And I would always say, I'm not here to step on your toes, oh, wicked preacher. Ah, ha, ah, ah, you know, if I step on your nose, I'm stepping on your toes. I'm trying to rip that damn dirty heart out and stomp it into hell. That's what I'm trying to do. I say, no, I'm not trying to step on your, your, your footsies. I'm going to rip the heart out. May I rock you, all you that have joined us. May he strengthen you, my enemies, as well. May the blessings of Yah, he says, if we would bless our enemies. And do tough unto those that despisefully use us. That's all right. I'm all right. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. May he enrich you all, Yisrael. And I hope that wherever we go from this place, and you that have joined us, of a beautiful gathering with us tonight, may he enrich you and strengthen you we will get all these messages up on the web for you to download to listen whatever yah cause your heart to do hallelujah so let us pray for each other and let us prepare our minds as we began to sow the barley the seed to wait for the sighting of that of the fruit of yah we come back to Pesach and Matzvah in the beginning of his year. Now, we go from here and begin to sow the barley, all right? Let's sow the sira, the seed, at the beginning of Yah's year that will show that we have been refreshed. We have plowed the field, and the fields have been plowed, all right? And so we began Pesach, we will have fruit, Matzvah, there shall be much fruit. Is that all right, son? I like the way y'all lays things at you. Just like I said to Simeon, get the plow. We got to get the plow in the field. He said, well, I want to take that and do this. I said, do that, but plow that. Need to get that. Why? Because you want to get, get on the weeds and stuff now. You don't want to give them a chance. They get crazy. And you got to keep plowing them on there. Killing the little ones. Dashing them into pieces, uh, so when you sow, you won't have as many weeds, Yisraya. That's what that's about. May Yah barak you all. Let us be strengthened. Let us stand to our feet. Let there be love. You that are at home, join us, all right. Hallelujah. Come on. Be love. Share. Let there be love. Oh, 
calls us Yahweh to arise. Give us a fair understanding, brother Leo, that is real. So let love share the manna. Let Ah, come on, sing it again. Come on. So let there be love shed among us. Let there be love in our love. May not your love sweet the sound cause us your way. We're going to be separate. Come on, let us move. Just a few of us. Uh, turn to someone and sing. Come on. Don't be ashamed. Come on, move on. Come on. So let them, let them be love. Share among us, Israel. Let, let them be love. Cause Joshua to arrive, give us a fresh understanding of the love that is real. So let death be love, share among us. Let death. Come on, one more time, come on. So let, let the be love, oh yeah, share the mongers. Let there be love in our love. May now your love sweep this house, cause us your way. To arrive, give us a friend, understanding the brotherly love that is real. So let there be love shared among us. Let Let us turn toward Yerushalayim. For this has been a great gathering, Yam. Your poor Achoruch among Israel. Your people that you grant unto us. A great gathering. We brought you. Those that have joined us in the course of the week, the live broadcast. We ask you to pour your Berakaya, your blessings upon them. Those that have joined us, those that have come and gone to strengthen, to heal. It's a time of sadness because it all must end. Yeah. We do barak you for all things. Take those home safely in the distance. That those have traveled, yeah. watch over them and cause your fire to burn greatly in their bosom. Help us, yeah, as we go from this place. That as this last great day in, we'll begin to tend to the fields to make sure that they're prepared. We must begin to see the barley. Yeah. So as we gather in Yerushalayim, ah, on Matzvah, yeah, there shall be much. We shall bring an offering before you, yeah, gladness. And a much perian 
we shall offer the meal offering unto you, Yah. Heal those and heal you, Yah. Heal us until we are healed on your shach, your people. We will rock you for all things. Strengthen us and keep us in your shoes, mighty name. And God, as you are, and cause the greatest commandments you give us to love you with all we have and to love our neighbors as ourselves arise in our bosom. As we gather collectively, Barak, your people, let your eyes be upon Yisra'ya. Preserve us and keep us, for we know that our sins are cleansed and forgiven. Rejoice before you in the mighty name of Yeshua, Hamashiach with great delights, and from the depths of our bosom we shout hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh my. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Ah, yes. Shine your light, oh yeah. Shine your light upon us soul. Oh, upon Israel. Oh, shine your light, oh yeah. Yeshua. Shine your light, oh yeah. Oh, shine your light. Shine your light, oh yeah, we do. Pour down your ruach, oh yeah. Pour it down upon us all. Pour it down, oh yeah. Oh, shine your light, oh yeah. Shine your light upon us all. Shine your light, oh yeah. Shine your light. Cause you ruach, cause you ruach, oh yeah. Feel, to feel Yisrael, your people. Oh, pour out your ruach, oh, pour it out, yeah. Pour it out, pour it out among us. Shine your light, yeah. Shine your shoe, shine, oh, shine your light, oh, yeah, shine your light, oh, shine, oh, shine, shine your light, shine your light, yeah, oh, shine, shine your light, oh, shine your light, oh, yeah, shine it, oh. Shine, shine your light, oh yeah, oh, oh, shine your light, oh yeah, shine, oh, shine your light, oh yeah, oh, shine, shine your light, oh, shine your light, oh, shine, shine your light, oh, Shine your light, oh yeah, oh, and we shall rejoice in your sure. We oh, rejoice in your sure, oh yeah, oh yeah, oh, oh, yeah. oh, 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 oh yeah, oh yeah, oh 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 yeah, oh yeah, oh oh oh. oh, oh.
that's all right. Hallelujah.